Um, just a, a quick reflection, first of all, on that excellent performance on Wednesday, excellent results as well. I think you described it as a big step in our development, and many said it was a 9 out of 10 performance. I think from the outside looking in, many will say, wow, just, just 9. How, how close are you to, to a 10, and how good a side can, can this become, really? Because I don't think it was even close to an eight, um, if I'm honest and honest, and that's uh, because we had a, a, there was a spell in the game where we where we let them yeah get back in the game. Not only the goal we conceded around that um, being two 0 up, being completely in control of the game, and that change after the two 0 um, it was not it's impossible to 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 play a game over 95 minutes like we did in the first 15, 20. I don't know. But um, for sure, we can could be closer to these first 15, 20 minutes than we were in the 20 minutes after that. So, um, but of course, um, there were so many brilliant football moments. And what I like most about it is that we um, uh, were really completely in control of our emotions, which is very important because um, it was never in close to a, to a heated. Or whatever fixture there was one situation I think when Juve Jota was down, um, two or three players were around these kind of things, and we really wanted to to be as as calm as possible, um, knowing that we need um, to be very aggressive as well and all these kind of things. So it's a, it's a challenge to go in a game like this uh, with the, with the atmosphere we could have had in the game. But I think that the start of the game just uh, calmed everything a little bit down and um, and, and finished off the game for sure as well. So, yeah, it was a really good game. I would say it was the, the best um, game from us at Buddhism since I'm here. And what do we want more? You, your side are playing so well, scoring lots of goals, winning virtually every game. It, it must be tempting not to change the team. But with the number of games, of course, you've got this month, have you got a, a real balancing act to perform in terms of? Players' welfare and getting results, of course. Yeah, players' welfare is of course very important, but it's um, we are we are used to tough schedule. The boys are used to tough schedule, obviously. I don't think we, we have to make now between the, the games you know, plenty of changes. At least on the start of December, we have to see how it will be in the in the middle or the end of December. Um, so, but we will see. It's it's a constant conversation with the medical department, the fitness department. Um, it'll be really, uh, we have pretty much all, all data we, 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 we can have um, and, and use them. And looking at that, then making a, a lineup which um, gives you a big chance to, to win the next football game. And this week is anyway, it's the same. Uh, we had uh, we changed quite a lot in the, in the last few weeks. This week we play Wolves. Um, Wolves play Wednesday as well, so both the same for both teams. So we'll see what we do exactly. I didn't make the lineup yet, uh, but I wouldn't expect now um, seven, eight changes. What do you make of, of, of Wolves? Um, three clean sheets in a row, but they've only scored one in their last four games. So how, how do you approach this one? First of all, I have to say a big compliment um, to the colleague there um, because it's really it, it, impressive. The impact that I think it was not not so easy to, to go there after the long the long time. Uh, Nuno has been there, and um, then when everybody everything's kind of settled, and, and, and I was I think was mostly happy when the last season was maybe not the, the, the best season Wolves had since then back in the Premier League, but uh, it was still very stable, clear way of um, style of play and these kind of things, and he changed, and and in, 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 a, in a good direction, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so he. The real football playing side with a real football playing idea. Um, defending maybe didn't change too much. It's um, still a similar system uh, what they played before. Um, everybody's involved when you play for Wolves. Um, I think that's clear. We, we know that from the time when we were um, having a closer look on Diogo Jota and the, 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 the numbers he had um, running wise uh, were incredible and that um, made it even more interesting for us. And so they, they, the offensive players, they have still to do the same now. Um, means they have counter-attacks, but they have technically good players, so the Neves is, is uh, available again. So to get him together with Moutinho is a, is a proper, proper midfield. Um, and whoever plays then on the wing, and, and Jimenez up front, I'm really happy for him that he's back and he's um, 
that he came over all that um, all, all the misery pretty much um, it was awful pictures now when I talk about it I have it still in my mind so um, I'm really happy to see him back and hopefully he will score a lot of goals apart from Saturday um, but it's a good team and um, it's a uh, um, really difficult to play. You know, they, they, you're right, they didn't score now. They're, they're not um, famous now for conceding a lot as well and not even conceding a lot of shots on goal and, and these kind of things. So we have to be creative, for sure. You, Damien, um, got this run of nine games through December and I think it's uh, Chelsea in the, in the new year. How, how would you describe that, that period, which is clearly sort of pivotal on how the season's going to play out? Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's my... Was it six, seven season? I don't know, know exactly. Um, yeah, and it, it, it's crazy. It was always crazy and will always be crazy. I think there's, everything is fine until you reach then Christmas time because um, 26 and 28 is still it's still not right, and, and we do that nowadays. It's still not right, and we have to accept that. And obviously, we do that, and it's a tradition. And I get all that, but um, it's it's really tough. It's really tough. But and it's on the end of December, pretty much. Uh, and generally, it's not getting better. The more successful we are in the cup competitions, is then it's pretty much exactly the same. So we have now two months ahead of us, which uh, will be really uh, difficult to deal with. But it's the, the, the only good news about that is for all teams the same. We have exactly one game more than other teams now than some other teams because we have one more Champions League game apart from that. Then I don't know and the Carabao Cup, right? Um, so two games more, but all the rest is for all the same, and that means we all have to dig in and, and, and fight through that period. Uh, be smart, being smart, try to recover as quick as possible. Um, in the end, and we know that even when it's highest intensity because it's Premier League, um, it's just 95 minutes every three days. That that's um, I know it's 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 not just 95 minutes. It's 95 minutes of, of super intense runs super intense challenges and all these kind of things so um, it's really not easy but in the end it's doable and that's what we try to do. A lot of people are saying it's, um, there are three outstanding teams in this title race. Um, is this the most exciting title race in your time at Liverpool? <laughs> is it already a title race? I don't know. Um, it's, uh, it's a very, I was said before, uh, it's a very, very good, highest quality league. Uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's unbelievable how good you have to be to win a, foot, to win a single football game in this league. And um, that we are around there, that's our, that's our target. You cannot, you cannot win the, the league in, in November or December. Um, you can lose it, maybe. Um, that's possible, but you cannot win it, so you have to be around. You have to, to keep contact, you have to be up there, and that means we have to chase everybody. Each player of each team we face from all directions, pretty much, and, and just to make sure that we are this one point, uh, one goal better in, in, in pretty much all the games, and that's that's a challenge. But um, I, I can see it in a moment already as a title race. But it's it's exciting, obviously. But it's not that we already start looking. I cannot say that never happened in the past. I think everybody knows that I watched the Leicester game when they played in Man City and um, uh, Company. Um, score that scream up. Um, it's not that I already watch now City and, and Chelsea games and think oh, it would be good if they lose or whatever. I, 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 most of the time I don't even know, know if, if they played and when they played, but um, that hopefully will happen at some point in March or April. That would be great and that would mean we are still around, but until between now and then there are obviously an awful lot of games to play and um, let's focus now on the next one. Juliet from the BBC, then we'll go to Pear on the Zoom, and then we'll go to Mike from uh, Radio. Um, Jürgen, can I talk about Diogo Jota again, scoring in midweek, he makes it look so easy. You mentioned him um, before in the press conference, um, with him being at Wolves and you taking that closer look at him. How much work goes into identifying a player like that, and then how much work does that player have to do to get to the level where he's at now? Diogo is well, that's what I, what I didn't know, obviously, when I, when I saw him first, but it's, a, it's an incredible package. From personality point of view, he's an incredible, really incredible boy. Um, really smart, uh, really organized, um, structured in a very nice way. Um, 
that's all what I didn't know, but it helps. Um, when we uh, when you look at his career, where he started, and Atletico, then on loan, blah, 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 all these kind of things, um, going then to Wolves. And I remember that I saw it when I saw him the first time, I thought it could be a player for me. Because of the, how intense he was in all the situations. It's technically, obviously, on a really high level, but um, the, the intensity you put in, that makes a real difference. Because on our level, they are technically, all the players are technically an incredible, have an incredible quality. But when everybody is really on a high level in one area, so how can you make a difference? And you can make the difference then with your attitude. And, and that's what I, what I was most excited about, about Diogo, this little mix. Then people think would have said that yeah, but he didn't score an awful lot of goals. Um, the problem is that Wolves had probably the most intense style of play for the, for the offensive wingers. Like, it's defend, for defensively, in an unbelievable way. So Jimenez was allowed to stay a little bit up. All the rest had to cover pretty much the whole pitch, and that costs you energy for being calm. And he was very young, he turns tomorrow 25. So he was very young then, um, and all that what made it really interesting for us. And um, for us, it was clear that he will make the next steps with us, and that's what he did. Uh, Atal from TV2 Norway, and then we'll go to Mike Hughes. Uh, Thank you for your time. I was going to ask you a question about uh, Mohamed Salah who has been in Britain for this season. Uh, in, in previous seasons though, he has been criticised for being too selfish, but now he's, he's not just your, your top goal scorer and the top goal scorer in the Premier League, he's also the player with, with the most assists in the league, almost twice as much as, as entire last season for him. Uh, so my question is, the question is, have you made some changes in that aspect of the game for him to make him more a team player, if you like, or, or is it a coincidence? not a coincidence, but we didn't have now a specific talk about that or whatever because it was not necessary. Um, these things happen naturally. It's, um, it was never, um, got never criticized by us for being too selfish or whatever because he never was. That a striker who comes in situations where we all want them to finish off, that he from time to time um, oversees uh, a mate who's maybe in a better position, it's completely normal. But it's not really easy to sit at home on a sofa and say, oh, you must have nice hit throw. If you play it yourself the game, then you know it's the most difficult thing to do. Uh, but what helps a lot is experience. What helps a lot is being in similar situations um, for plenty of times, um, that you know what happens when we are there. As a team, we developed, obviously, so it should be clear when you are in a specific area on the pitch, that in a in, in a, like 10, 15 yards away from uh, in another specific area, which should, should be a, a, a player with uh, wearing the same <coughs> shirt um, because of our formation. And uh, that what helps obviously then, and more has now the experience. It's calm enough, didn't lose any kind of greed for scoring, but it's calm enough um, and developed technically again on a, on a it was incredible, but he did. Um, and um, so it just has more time to, to, to see the right things in a situation. When you see somebody in a better position, you can be sure he passed the ball there. But when he thinks he can finish it off himself, then I expect him to try to finish it off himself, even when he misses the chance, because that's the, the nature of a chance. You you, you you finish it off, and then you then you realize it was the right decision or not. And obviously for him, it was very often the right decision. Thank you. Mike Hughes, and we'll go to Carl, and then we'll finish with Neil. Hi, oh, yeah. It's a long time no see. Yeah, have you missed me? Um, yes. Right. Very uh, it's much. four weeks since the, the West Ham defeat, and after that there was the international break. But since then, Liverpool I think four games, 14 goals scored, one conceded. The players appear to have come back, sort of re-energised, and almost as if there's, there's been a reset after the international break. And what enables, what are the ingredients that enable you to, to sort of do that, or, or the players to do that? To, uh, not, not, not really re-energized, it was an intense period, uh, the, the international break for me, for you, um, for the players it wasn't. Um, they had important games to play, finals um, pretty much to qualify for the, for the um, World Cup, right? <laughs> for the World Cup. Um, and what helped most was the defeat at West Ham. 
unfortunately, we are human beings, and as human beings, sometimes you need to get a knock to get um, that you really understand what is necessary. And unfortunately, I would now love to say it was the last defeat we needed for that, but <laughs> maybe there will some other um, coming up. We try to avoid that, but it helped a lot because the game at West Ham was a very good example that we conceded two goals after set pieces is um, is not good, but with the quality of West Ham can have the problem was we gave West Ham too much set pieces, especially corners, whatever. That be because they are good in that, so you have to avoid that. It means you, you have to defend them higher, that they don't come in a situation where, where they can get a, a corner. These kind of things. There were so many things we could have done, we should have done better. Because we scored the obviously two goals, but we conceded three and we didn't concede three because we made all mistakes in the last line or we made, made we, we conceded three goals because we let these set pieces happen. And they only happen when we don't defend as a unit really well. Um, and this was one of these games where it was clear what was the reason for losing, not the offensive part of our game, but the defensive part of our game. And we all know um, you only can be consist. You can only win football games consistently if you defend on the absolute highest level. That's what we didn't do that day. That's why we lost, um, and that's what we took into the the. the consideration and into the next game it was difficult to analyze it then because they had their leave but when they came back we still reminded them after 10 days that it was was uh, we did not really well in that department and we have to improve that easy said but um, obviously we worked a lot on, on these kind of things in the preseason and then the season starts and the hectic schedule and all these things and you, you 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 lose them a little bit and that was an important moment to to get that back um, really in our focus and to to go again from there, but in the end, um, things like this uh, will not last forever, uh, or only, will only last as long as you stay 100% focused, and that's the, for us the job to do now. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Uh, okay, so it's Carmarkham, Neil Jones, and then we go to the embargo section. I think that's Andy Pontus up there. Yes, yes, it is. is. Yeah. Good, so Carl, Neil, and then, 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 then to the uh, embargo section. Hi, and just to go back to, to Diogo Jota, um, a lot of his goals seem to be um, right place, right time. You know, like Southampton, particularly, he, he, he was close to goal and he scored. How much is that his design and how much is his natural instinct, do you think? Oh, it's both. It, it, I don't know how much, how much, um, like 50% that, 50% that, I don't know, but it's, it's both. You have, as a striker, you have to be there. The, the goals he scored against Southampton. Um, I think Mo was, if, if Diogo is not there, Mo is there. So it was obviously that Sadio um, passed the ball to Robo. Um, Robo goes with a brilliant run, but a brilliant pass as well. And then you need to have a player, at least one player at the first post. We had two players at the first post, which is a pretty good idea when the ball is arriving there. Um, that was the first goal. The second goal is then you, as a striker, you just be not involved in the, it was a one-two between Pretty sure between Hendo and, and Mo, and then um, he Mo passed the ball um, square and Joe was in front of the goal. So it, um, you always say that these these goals are not easy. In, in the, it looks easy in the last moment, but it's not easy because you have to be there. You have to read the situations right. So that's both instinct, but as design, the way we want to call it design, he has to be there. So that's it's, that, that's what you do. Uh, in training, that's why you have to. It makes a, a good game. A game is a good game when you have a, a cross or a p whatever a, a, a pass into the box, and you have at least four options there. That makes a good game. If on a first post, you have on a second post, you have one in the center and one on the edge. So that's a really good goal, I think. The Hendo's goal against Everton is a goal like this, for example, um, and. These kind of things again. It's so easy to speak now about it, but in a game you have to. You cannot say in a moment when you've been realized. Oh, it will cross in a second, and you are 60 yards away. You will not make it. So it's all about how you develop the game in these areas. And if that would be easy, and we would do it. it. Would have started 2015 October exactly with that, and um, would be now even much better in, in that. But it's not because the opponent is there in between, and they defend situations, and you have to judge it right. Good example for judging situations right is the goal we conceded against Everton. 
Trent was 100% convinced we keep the ball on, this, on that side. That's why he was already a bit wide and high, which is absolutely fine. If we keep the ball in that moment, we don't keep the ball, it's then easy for me to say, but Trent, where have you been? But actually, yeah, it's easy, but it's not right because um, we lost the ball on that side and we had a lot of players on that side um, to keep the ball or if we can keep it to just shoot them uh, over the roof or whatever, we didn't. So that's football. You have to, you have to judge situations and you have to, to, to offer options for your mates and you have to follow the situation that you are in a good spot for either finishing in the off or protecting the, the whole attack. That's it. Well, we see pictures of Joe Gomez and, and Naby Keita joining in parts of training. Whereabouts are they? Big parts. It, really, it was really nice to see. They were get yesterday. Or we didn't let them do the full session, but it actually, just because medical told us don't do that, but they look brilliant. So they will use now, I think, the next two, three days um, to, to do the stuff they have to do while being part of team training. And then I think from Sunday on, if nothing happens between now and then, they should be in contention again. Final one of this section before we go to Ivago Neil Jones. Hi, Jan. You've had the Claudio Tafarel to the coaching staff. Can you just tell us a bit about how that came about and, and what you think he's going to bring to the, to the club? Tafarel, a really good guy. Um, is um, yeah, quite a, for a while already the idea when I saw our, all our extremely talented goalkeepers now. Um, when I see them, like in all age groups, we really think we have an outstanding bunch of of players there. Um, starting, of course, with Ali, but then Kweef, then Marcello, then Harvey. Beat did a was brilliant in, in Ireland. Um, uh, Jarosz um, is doing well. So, and we have a lot of games. So means we have um, we are constantly on the road in hotels, stuff like this. So we wanted a real solution for for these boys, not only for these boys, but for these boys as well. Um, and um, want to create our own goalkeeping philosophy, actually. And for that, we thought it makes sense to mix it up with a coach who was, uh, was a, a world-class player, obviously, and works in a moment together with two of the best goalies in the world, with Ederson and Alisson. So we spoke, we spoke to Ali, and yeah, he was quite pleased about that idea and, um, and then we spoke to Tafa and he loved the idea as well and here we go. Um, it's really it's really good um, and yeah, exciting. Kind of say it differently. And he's a brilliant guy. And he's older than me, which is really important because he was the <laughs> oldest in coaching stuff, so uh, that was a really important part as well. And, and just to, to make sure that we, that, and John Achterberg um, renew this contract, by the way, until 2024, because people are very often making wrong conclusions because of some things. Uh, um, uh, John is the head of the goalie department, and Tafa is a wonderful add-on in that department. Okay, thank you very much.